guys welcome back to my channel Simone here so today I'm going to be filming my September TBR and like I said in my previous TBR video which I will um, link below I've been loving TBRs recently and I'm not going to stop them anytime soon as you may know my TBRs do take a certain sort of structure um, and I'm adding a little bit in this time so last time I said I was going to do three library books three of my sign up to the TBR um, books which I'll link the playlist for that below as well and three of a specific genre whatever genre it is and then one random that I've also now recently this month joined NetGalley which is a website if you don't know most people probably do where people who kind of book bloggers and booktubers etc um, can get ebooks which are sent out before the publication date of the book so like an early release and um, I've got a few this month and so I want to read two of those next month as well so I'm going to start with those so the first one I'm going to try to read this month is Escaping the Rabbit Hole How to Debunk Conspiracy Theories Using Facts, Logic and Respect by Mick West this is a non-fiction book which obviously talks about conspiracy theories and it talks about um, how to kind of get out of the hole of being in the conspiracy theory I think and I'm not entirely sure too much else about this it sounded really interesting that's why I decided to I requested it and I was lucky to receive it so this book um, is per, uh, due to come out on the 18th of September and um, I'd like to read it before then to get my review up before that way so um, yeah for the books I get from NetGalley I will be posting Goodreads reviews on them so um, yeah go and check them out uh, once they're done in fact I'll link them on my wrap up when I do them so you don't have to miss out on those. And then the next e-arc that I have um, is Accuse, The Unsolved Murder of Elizabeth Andes. And this is by Amanda Rossman and Amber Hunt. Now this is another non-fiction about a woman who was found strangled, bound and stabbed in 1978. And the police, I think, within a few hours had decided that it was an open and shut case. And her childhood sweetheart, um, or college sweetheart, um, was arrested and... Um, the police and the uh, prosecutors still think they have they had the right guy but I think he's been found not guilty is it by two different juries and I think he's released and it's kind of about the two sides I think and this one is another one that comes out on the 18th of September so again it's one I want to read um, because I'm really excited and I'm just really happy to be able to get books early like I feel like really privileged for that so thank you so much to NetGalley and also so Diversion Books was the publisher for Accused and Skyhorse Publishing are the publisher for Escaping the Rabbit Hole so again big thank you to both of those publishing houses. So according to my sort of schedule that I've talked about the next three books should be my library books. Now as you know um, and I've said in the last video that I am hoping to be moving soon so I'm not actually getting any books out of the library because I don't want to um, have books sort of ongoing while I'm obviously moving. I can't I'll have to take them all back and then it'll feel like I'm not doing the TBR that I said I was going to. So what I've decided is just to pick three books that I'm interested in reading off of my shelves because I'm also trying to read some of the books on my shelves so I don't have to take them with me. Because um, obviously lugging lots of books around is a lot and I do have a lot of books as you can see. So the first book that I've decided to pick up is strangely enough another non-fiction which I think is kind of a theme for me at the minute. I really am enjoying non-fiction books. Um, I am just really excited to kind of read some more non-fiction so I'd love recommendations if you guys have any. But this one is The Portrait of a Killer, Jack the Ripper Case Closed by Patricia Cornwell. Now if you've watched my videos for a long time you'll know that Patricia Cornwell is one of my favourite authors. I love the Case Carpet series that she wrote which is a, um, it's a fictional series basically. But this is basically, um, uh, but Patricia Cornwell as an author, um, it says inside here that she helped to establish the Virginia Institute of Forensic Science and Medicine and serves as its chairman of the board. And I think she has a lot of knowledge of the kind of um, criminal investigation side of things. And I think because of that, she's used her skills to try to figure out um, like what the... Um, Jack the Ripper story was and kind of exactly what might have happened and what she thinks the conclusion to that is. I have always been fascinated by true crime, again is another thing that I've said, I love non-fiction and I specifically love true crime and I feel like Jack the Ripper is one of those really like frustrating cases because nobody like definitely knows what happened so I'm really really interested to see what conclusion she's come to, what she thinks it is and whether I you know agree with her. Um, this is quite a, bit, a big book, I think it's about 
well it's not as bad because I thought it's nearly 500 pages so it's not too bad I feel like this one I'm gonna fly through there because like I said I love true crime and I love to read about this sort of thing so I'm definitely excited for this one then the next one I've chosen apparently I've decided to go for the difficult books this time um, I have decided to read the sequel to a book which let's be honest we all know how bad I am at reading sequels um, but this one is The Two Towers by J.R.R. Tolkien. So this is the second book in the Lord of the Rings trilogy. The first one being The Fellowship of the Ring. I had to think then. Um, I really struggled. Like the first book I found really difficult to read, but I really enjoyed it. I had this book on my shelf for quite a while now, and I just really want to read it, to be completely honest with you. Um, yeah, so not really much else I can say about it other than the fact that I'm desperate to get on with some of my series because. I feel like it's getting a bit silly now how many series I've read like the first or second book too and then not actually read anymore so yeah I have this on my shelf and I've decided this month is going to be the month to read it and then the third book that I decided I wanted to read this month is All That Remains by Patricia D. Cornwell which is the third book in the Case Scarpetta series as I said before talking about Patricia Cornwell I love her um, fictional stories I've read a lot of them I've just never read them all in order and so I've started again like I said I've read the first two and I decided I'm gonna pick up the third one this month I feel like having a non-fiction and a fiction book written by her is gonna be amazing and I'm really looking forward to doing that because like I said I think this series is one of my favorite series it follows Kay Scarpetta if you don't know who is a um, a forensic who is the chief medical examiner in Virginia County and I've loved the first I think I gave both the post-mortem and body of evidence the first two books a five star I can't completely remember but yeah love this can't wait to read it and yeah excited to continue on with the series so the next three books are going to be the last three books to my sign up to the TBR this round round three um, I have yeah read all the others now so this is going to be the last three um, that I actually own. So the first one of those is A Monster Calls by Patrick Ness which I don't know a lot about other than people who told me how much it makes them cry and I'm kind of a bit nervous about that because I used to never be a book crier but recently I mean I don't know if I'm just emotional but I have cried at a lot of books and I find it quite easy now to cry at a book so this could probably this is going to probably destroy me. Um, I think it's about, a, uh, it's about a little boy named Connor whose mother I think is ill and there's something about him seeing a monster climbing in his window. Other than that I don't know anything else. Um, I don't have the illustrated edition which I think is a little bit dis like upsetting, not upsetting, but like um, disappointing I suppose. A lot of people have said that the um, illustrations are amazing. But I've also read one Patrick Ness book before and I wasn't the biggest fan. I read... Uh, was it called more more than this was it yeah more than this by Patrick Ness so I think I gave it like a two or a three star I didn't love it it was okay so I'm interested to see whether or not it, whether it's his writing that I'm not a big fan of or if it's just that book that I wasn't particularly into and yeah and then it'll be one of the books that I've read on my list and the next one I have is another one with monster in the title and this one is Monster Island by David Wellington which is helpfully written on the front a zombie novel so the back of this just says, it's one month after a global disaster. The most developed nations of the world have fallen to the shambling zombie masses. Only a few pockets of humanity survive. In New York City, the dead walk the streets, driven by an insatiable hunger for all things living. From the other side of the planet, a small but heavily armed group of schoolgirls turned soldiers comes in search of desperately needed medicine with a former UN weapons inspector as their local guide. They think they are prepared for anything. On Monster Island, they will find that there is something worse even than undeath. I mean, I've read a couple of zombie novels, and I absolutely love zombie novels, but um, yeah, I've not actually heard much about this one. For some reason, I obviously had clicked that I wanted to read it, hence why it's on my stand up to the TBR. Um, but I don't know too—I didn't know too much about it. Um, but I love a zombie novel, so I don't really—I <laughs> don't really mind what it's about. Um, I'm interested to see how this is different because I think I read, like I said, I read the first days. I read first days by Rhiannon Freighter, which I liked, and I read what was the other zombie novel I read? I can't remember off the top of my head. I don't know. Um, but because I've read zombie novels before, I often find that sometimes you get ones that aren't particularly um, like special. They're nothing different about them. So I always like to know kind of what the difference is. And this one hopefully has something that's different about it. And I'm excited to, to give it a go. And then the final sign up to the TBR book that I have on this list 
is The Things We Keep by Sally Hepworth. Now, again, this is one I feel like is going to make me cry um, because, and I know I've talked about this a lot, so I don't really want to go into it too much. This follows um, um, a woman named Anna Forster who's 38 years old and she has um, been diagnosed with early onset dementia slash Alzheimer's. Again, I don't really know the difference. Um, and she um, is sent to a I think she goes to like a care home I can't remember exactly yes and uh, assisted living sorry she goes to an assisted living facility and there she meets a man named Luke and I think it's about them having a friendship and trying to kind of figure out what's going on to them I don't know what is wrong with Luke because he's the only one her age um, and I think it's also about the woman who um, is the carer at the um, assisted living facility so I feel like I've said this before I've said this before my great nan passed away in December from dementia or she had dementia and that was one of the reasons and I I still don't fully understand it I think I've still not completely come to terms with it I miss her terribly but I think that because dementia is not something that I've really experienced in my like immediate like how do I explain it she passed away um after about a month or something of being diagnosed with dementia and unfortunately I didn't get to see her um before she passed away because um she was ill beforehand and um it was very overwhelming for her being around people who didn't who she didn't know who they were um i saw her pro probably about six months before she passed away and she didn't recognize me and that was really really hard for me to come to terms with and really difficult for me to um it was just really really hard and i think that so i didn't go and see her again because it was confusing to her and to be honest she does live she lived like two hours away and so it, we didn't we didn't see her when I say like regularly I mean my, we would go and see her a couple of times a year kind of thing but we were always on the phone to her um but because obviously she was so confused with it we obviously my parent my my dad and my grandparents really went to see her a lot so it wasn't like she was on her own it wasn't anything like that um but it was difficult for me because I she didn't recognize me and I didn't want to confuse her and I feel like it's because of that I never totally understood exactly what was going on apart from the fact she didn't recognise who I was. And so I'm hoping this book helps me to understand some more about dementia without it being too upsetting for me to read. Um, yeah, I, I really want to read this one because I do think this will really help me and maybe help me come to terms with it a little bit more. I'm not 100% sure but I will let you know once I've read it. So then I have my theme for the month, which I've decided this month is going to be standalones, just because I've got so many series that I've started, and I'm really, like I said in previously, I'm really bad at finishing them. The only problem with filming at quarter past eight in the morning is the fact that everybody's driving to work. And so that's all I can hear. Oh, it's frustrating. Um, I... Yeah, so I've decided that standalones, I'm going to try and get three of my standalones out, not out of the way, but I'm going to read three of my standalones just because I don't want to start any more series and right now I haven't really got the willpower to continue on with stories. I just want to kind of read like one, th oh, just one story in a book. So the first one I've decided to read, I'm a little bit nervous about reading because I used to love this author. In fact, I do love this author. I love this author's YA stuff but I read one of this author's adult novels last year and I really didn't like it. So I'm really hoping, because this is another adult novel, that I'm actually going to enjoy this one. I don't know how it's going to go. Uh, this one is Attachments by Rainbow Rowell. I read Landline by her last year, like I say, and I absolutely disliked it. I really did not like it at all. And But I've loved Fangirl, I loved Eleanor and Park, so... Oh, and I loved Carry On as well. But this follows two women um, in 1999, Beth and Jennifer, who are emailing back and forth um, at work, and Lincoln is the IT specialist who basically is uh, monitoring all the emails, and he sort of starts to fall in love with one of the girl, the women um, while he's reading their emails. And then I think it's like 
I don't know, it sounds a little bit creepy, I'm not gonna lie. Uh, he falls in love with one of them and I think he then meets her and has to kind of be like, oh, I don't know who you are. <laughs> I don't know, exactly. Um, this is such a colourful book, so I'm excited for that. I, like I say, I really hope I like this one. It's not too big. Um, I, I didn't like Landline, but I'm really hoping that this one is different for me. Then I have a book that I don't really know too much about, but a lot of people have talked about it. I've heard lots of great reviews, and so I'm really hoping that it's one that I enjoy as well. And that is The Time Traveller's Wife by Audrey Niffenegger. I think that's how you say it. Again, I don't know too much about this. I will just quickly read the back. It says, This is the extraordinary love story of Claire and Henry, who met when Claire was six and Henry was 36, and were married when Claire was 22 and Henry 30. Impossible but true, because Henry suffers from a rare condition where his genetic clock periodically resets and he finds himself pulled suddenly into his past or future. In the face of this force they can neither prevent nor control, Henry and Claire's struggle to lead normal lives is both intensely moving and entirely unforgettable. Um, that sounds really, really interesting. Um, I read... The first 15 lives of Harry August last was it no two years ago and loved it. Last year I read How to Stop Time by Matt Haig, absolutely loved it. I feel like this could possibly be the next one in that sort of time travel thing that I'm really enjoying. So I'm really, really hoping I do because that sounds really interesting. And I feel like can you imagine being married to someone and suddenly they become like six years old? How weird. I don't quite I mean yeah, sounds incredible. I cannot wait to read this now. I didn't know what it was about really, so now I've read that I'm like, definitely. <laughs> okay, and then we have a controversial one, both for me and for everybody else. This book, um, according to Goodreads, it has a number, so it has like a number in a series after it. However, it came out in like 2000, I think, or something like that. It came out like 15 years ago at least. And none of the other books have been published, and I don't think there's any plans for them to be published. I think it was announced, and then it never happened. So I'm counting it as a standalone. And you may all know what I'm talking about, because I have previously said how much I don't like this book. Um, I tried to read it, or I read it and didn't like it, and I've kind of mentioned a few times that I want to reread it to see if it was the time when I read it that, I, that made me not like it, rather than um, the actual book itself. Let's give it a go. Ready? You ready? What do you think it is? Have a guess in the comments before I say it. So it is The Host by Stephanie Meyer. Now this book is huge. Actually, how many pages is this book? Oh, it's not too bad. It's 618. I feel like I'm so used to reading 1,000 page books or like 800 page books that 600 pages is like nothing to me, um, which sounds really weird. I, like I said, read this. Another time, it's like a... I've mentioned this in my recent sci-fi reads and recommends, so I'll link that video below. Um, but I met, I've, I've read this last year, or I, um, I read, um, or I, I read it, but I didn't like it at all. I gave it one star. I really couldn't get into it, and I, I feel like the only reason I didn't like it was because I read it at the wrong time, um, and I just think I feel like I should like this. Like I feel like this would be a good book if I read it at the right time, I don't know. I might hate it again, and who knows, but I am going to give this another go, and this month, and it will happen. I'm kind of scared, also kind of excited. Don't really know how I feel about it. We'll see how it goes. Okay, and then we have my favourite bit of the video, where I pick a random book. So I have my laptop on the side down here. I'm going to go to my Goodreads owned shelf, and I'm going to press random. So... Is it on random? Yeah, so it's loading. When it loads, I will look because I have now done this twice and twice I've had quite an interesting reaction. The first time it was massive and I was like, oh god, I've got to read a huge book. Second time was Christmas. Third time, what do we think? I'm excited. I don't know what I want to read. Let's find out. Oh, interesting. Okay, I'm going to go and get my Kindle because this book's on my Kindle. Okay, so I'll just quickly tell you that on my um, Kindle I have a lot of the collections of different authors so I have like Oscar Wilde's collection, the Bronte sisters, like Charles Dickens and so one of the collections is what's come up so what I decided when I before I did any of this was whatever one came up I would read the, the first one or the next one that I haven't read in the series in the in the book should I say in the collection so the book that's come up is a book called Kim by Rudyard Kipling who is the author of The Jungle Book 
So I'm just going to really quickly read the synopsis off of my laptop because I really don't know anything else about this. So it says, Kim is set in an imperialistic world, a world strikingly masculine, dominated by travel, trade and adventure, a world in which there is no question of the division between white and non-white. Two men, a boy who grows into early manhood and an old aesthetic prince, the Lama, are at the centre of the novel. A quest faces them both. Born in India, Kim is nevertheless white, a sahib. While he wants to play the great game of imperialism, he is also spiritually bound to the Lama. His aim, as he moves chameleon-like through the two cultures, is to reconcile these opposing strands while the Lama searches for redemption from the Wheel of Life. A celebration of their friendship in a beautiful but often hostile environment, Kim captures the opulence of India's exotic landscape overlaid by the uneasy presence of the British Raj. So that's really interesting. I've never read anything else apart from The Jungle Book by Rudyard Kipling and I read that when I was really, really young. And I feel like I do need to have more diversity in my reading, so hopefully this will be one I really enjoy. This is one of his novels rather than his like short stories, so um, that could be really interesting. I am fascinated by the Indian culture. I, I don't know much about it really, so um, the idea of reading a book about um, that sounds really, really great to me. So like I say, I'm going to read that. I'm really, really excited to do that. Um, and yeah, hopefully I will really love it. So that is my uh, September TBR. So those are the 12 books that I have decided to read this month. I'm really excited to read them. Let me know in the comments below if you've read any of these books and what you thought. And also let me know what books you're planning on reading in September because I'm always interested to hear from you. So give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. And I'll see you next time. Bye guys. Thank you.